welcome to the first question and answer tarot video. I'm really excited about this. Uh, I want to just thank Jerry for uh, sending me an email and popping me a question. It was about a reading she did quite a while ago, but she can't get it out of her mind. So um, I thought I'd respond with a video and just say, you know, the top 11 things that you can do if you draw a blank on a card reading. Okay? I wrote it down so that I wouldn't forget any of them. So the first one is actually telling your client that you're drawing a blank. Or if you're doing cards for yourself, just put the cards away. Because <laughs> it's not going to tell you. I find it really hard to read for myself anyways. But if you're doing a reading for a client, uh, and they're in front of you, just be honest. Just say, I need a minute. Uh, it's not giving me anything at the second, right? And tip number two, ask the card, can you please be clearer for me? <laughs> yes, it works. Um, so that is a simple, straight up uh, way to do that. And then the third thing is to pick up and hold the card for a minute and kind of close your eyes, breathe and and feel the energy of the card. Uh, number four, start talking about the symbolism on the cards. Note the colors. Uh, if the card is extremely blue, that's related to chakra, uh, the throat chakra. If it's extremely, <laughs> uh, if it's a uh, red that's related to the root chakra. You, you feel me on that one? So there's that. There is no harm in pulling uh, number five is there's no harm in pulling another card, right? Another tarot card. After you ask, can you be clearer on this or what is this related to? Can you give me a hint? Easy as that. Or if you don't want to pull another tarot card, pull an oracle card to find out the basis of the situation or who is this related to. Just ask some questions aloud as you're doing that. Now number seven is look in the book. And I have done this in front of tarot clients and I have done this uh, for myself or whatever. A lot of the times just looking in the book kind of and you read something and something pops out onto the page, right? And uh, that's another thing that I didn't write down here, is if you stare at the card, so you get a bonus tip, if you stare at the card and something pops out at you, what is that symbolic meaning of, right? So let's just say um, the sun card, the sun card, card in the Mystic Dreamer Tarot, sometimes the winter coat pops out to me, sometimes the archway does, generally speaking, you know, something does, and if it's the archway, you have to walk through the archway to happiness, right? Awesome. Or on the same lines for tip number seven, looking in the book, you can also Google search it. See what other people are saying about that exact same card. Uh, your, your knowledge of that card may not be at its peak yet. So you're meant to research and expand your knowledge on that one. So that might not, Google searching it might not work when you have a client in front of you, but it's definitely valid for if you're doing a friendly reading for a friend or yourself, right? So number eight is look to the cards around it. So you're going to look for indicator cards, combinations, if uh, all the suits are the same, uh, what's out of whack, if it's all pentacles in reverse, the person's probably having weight or money problems. Um, if it's all um, cups, they're on an emotional roller coaster, right? So, or the other combination is um, the Ace of Wands and the Empress card together, generally speaking, means a pregnancy. Uh, so that's a good tip too. Number nine, ask your guides above for inspiration. <laughs> and usually some sort of little thought or thought process starts popping up for you there. Uh, number 10 is you may be burnt out. If the cards aren't giving you the answers like you used to, uh, you need to take a break. 
take a few days off, take a week off, do whatever it is that you need to do. I don't know if you can see these ducks. Can you see them? Anyways, they're kind of cool. There's a whole group of them. Okay, now finally, 11. If you and your client may not be meant, may not need to know, and you may not, the spirit may not want you to know what's going on. Um, you know, there's no reason to keep on searching into something if the cards are just blank for you. Uh, for instance, one reading I did, this woman sat down, this is the only time it's ever happened to me, this one woman sat down, and we pulled out all the cards, and I flipped over one card, and I said, that's okay, I'm going to go to the next card, and then I flipped over the next card, I got nothing, I got nothing, I got nothing, I gave her her money back and said, sorry, I'm not the reader for you. That's also another thing. You could just not be the reader for the person in front of you. Not every reader is meant to read for every client, right? So that's why we specialize. That's why we do things in a certain way. That's why we have styles. So embrace your style. I hope these tips help you a little bit. Um, I don't know if I went into the symbolism quite enough, but follow that. I'm just going to add this is if you just start talking about the symbolism, sometimes something just clicks inside and you go in that direction. Anyways, I hope that helps you and happy tarot reading and I'll talk to you soon.